right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We are at our final session for the day. Here we go. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about email and beyond navigating customer communications in an omni-channel universe. And I've got some special guests today, and I'm very grateful to have them here with us. First and foremost, we have Julie Norman, our SVP of Marketing at CPS Exchange. Julie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I am, I am super excited and super proud of the team, by the way, for all the amazing work on email camp. So I hope everyone has had an awesome first day. But congrats, Thomas and the team on an incredible journey into the galaxy. <laughs> of course. Thank you for all your support as well. And first time as well, we have Kate Gerwa, the CMO of SAS at Shinch. Kate, how are you doing today? Thank you for joining us. I'm doing great. It's fun to be here in space with you all. And I actually got to sit in on the earlier session, which was great. It's uh, it's really um, fantastic being with love all the it. email nerds. Love <laughs> it, love it, love it. Also, uh, we had a special request earlier for Pink Floyd. So that went out to Kate earlier. If We had uh, we had Pink Floyd's <laughs> Breathe. You. So made sure that made it onto the playlist. So ladies and gentlemen, just a friendly reminder, please save those questions for the Q&A section, which will be in the Q&A tab. So please make sure to throw those in the upper right-hand corner. I'm not sure if you can see it because my hands are getting lost in space, but it's okay. So um, awesome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and take a step out and make sure all my passengers are right at the space station because I think a xenomorph got in here. So I'm going to let our presenters take it away, and I will see you all towards the end of the session. Take care. Awesome. Uh, well, everybody, it is so great to be here um, on our first day of email camp. So quick introduction. Uh, my name is Julie Newman. I'm the SPP of marketing for um, our CPAS business unit at Cinch. Uh, so I have uh, joined in December. Uh, this is my first time in email, but I have been a huge fan of email. Uh, for my entire career as a lifelong marketer in B2B and B2C. So uh, it has been wonderful getting to know everything about Email Geek World and all of the amazing things that you guys are doing. Um, and I'm, I'm super excited to have with us as our guests today for this session, another one of our marketing leaders at Cinch, Kate Gerwe. So uh, Kate, I'll turn it over to you to give a quick intro. Hi, everybody. I'm Kate Gerwe. I manage the marketing business marketing across the business unit for all of our uh, turnkey SMS and text messaging customer engagement platforms. Uh, so that includes Cinch Message Media, Click Send, and Simple Texting. Uh, I joined a little over a year ago. And as my profile says, I've worked with big companies, Fortune 500 companies and small startups and really like to focus on driving results and real value. So I'm really excited to be here today because I think that's what it's really all about. So thanks, Julie, for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to build on what Kate said, that is what this session is supposed to be about, right? So the focus of this session is we know that you all are incredible email marketers, um, but we also know that customer communications is very much an omni-channel game now and, and making sure that you are reaching your customers where they want, when they want, how they want. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about going beyond email, right? So taking a, a strong email program as your foundation and how do you start to build beyond that? And um, I'll, I'll share some stats and some research uh, that we've seen, but um, definitely the most logical step, the next step when you start to add more channels into your communication strategy is looking at um, SMS and, and messaging. So we wanted to give you guys just a little bit of a primer about how you could potentially do that and some of the things you should be thinking about as you look to expand your strategy. And as Kate said, um, you know, as two very uh, revenue and results driven marketers ourselves, sort of, you know, so we, we see this as a best practice as well. Um, and so we're excited to share some of the ways that you can do email and beyond. So... Uh, I'm going to jump right in first and, and share um, some of the research that we've gotten, both from some of our own customers and things that we've seen in the Cinch universe, as well as just um, general best practices and things uh, uh, that third parties have also been validating. So why should you care about going beyond email? Uh, so it is all about what your customers want, right? This is, this is really about making sure you are communicating with your customers in a way that resonates with them. So when asked, like three of the, the big things that really stands out that customers um, sort of repeatedly across different surveys and different pieces of research talk about is number one, 
they want you to be accessible, right? So they want to be, you know, 71% of customers expect a real-time communication, um, you know, the, between themselves and whatever business they're dealing with. So people want responsive, they want fast, they want to meet immediate. We are in a world of instant gratification, right? And people want that and how they communicate with brands as well. Um, but they also want this to be personalized, right? So they, they want to have a personal experience. Um, a medical found that 75% of adults want to communicate with brands the way they communicate with their friends and family. So that means, you know, I mean, how often do you still write emails to your friends and family? <laughs> um, maybe, maybe not, uh, maybe not still at the top of the list. Maybe you do. Um, but also, you know, whether that's in social media or it is in text and in, in other channels as well, they want to have that sort of, you know, very accessible and personal relationship in their communications with brands as well. Um, and then most importantly is they want to get value out of um, their communications with companies. So 88% um, of customers in Salesforce research said that the experience they have is just as important as the, the products. Um, and the services that they buy from a company. So they want value. People are busy. People have a lot of other brands and companies uh, competing for their attention these days. They have a lot of things they're trying to prioritize and think about. Um, you need to make sure that not only are you where they want you, when they want you, like how you can communicate with them, but also that your communication is driving a lot of value, right? That it's, it is a two-way street of value, not only what we get out as as marketers, as you know, product leaders, as people that want to communicate with the customer base, but also what is it that customers want? Um, how are they getting the best experience possible on on their terms? So, specifically, when we talk about email and messaging, right? How do, how do these two things really work together? Um, We've seen that we, we have done some of our own research in our own customer base. So uh, this top stat, a 6.6 .6 increase in purchase when you're actually activating across email and messaging, um, that came from a Braze study where they also saw a 46% increase in repeat buyers. Uh, when, we, when we did this ourselves within our own portfolio, we also looked at SMS and MMS, right? So the majority of this conversation we're, we're going to have today is around SMS um, because that normally is the most logical first step. But more rich media formats like MMS are also, uh, you know, that's sort of like the uh, 201 um, you know, once you kind of conquer, you have your amazing email program, you conquer adding in SMS and text, how do you actually take that a step further with really rich and personalized messaging? Um, so with one of our, our largest clients, who is a, a US telecom, they saw significant lifts by using multiple products as part of a connected journey for their customers. So um, this was a, a customer that had started with SMS with sort of their core program. So they added email and MMS into that mix just by adding email. So being able to communicate over text and then adding email to that combined, they saw a 400% lift in conversions by being able to talk to their customers in multiple channels. Um, they saw an additional bump of 260% when they added MMS into that. Um, also saw a decrease in opt-outs when they started to um, do some of the more rich texting formats. So a ton of potential here, right, on, on what we can do and the business results that we can see when we combine these channels. Um, and so just looking at, at why does this work, right? Why do we want to look at actually combining email and messaging? Um, what, why is that a sweet spot? Because there are so many different ways you can communicate with your customers, phone calls, uh, social media, just every, you know, whatever it is that you're putting on your website, in-app notifications. But there seems to be a really great um, sweet spot and, and a lot of synergies when you start looking at email and messaging. Um, so, you know, a, a big reason to be looking at cross-channel uh, communications is the increased reach, right? You're immediately able to hit different kinds of customers in their preferred channel, um, you know, at, at once in one campaign or with a campaign that's actually, you know, working with different, different parts of those channels. Um, there are also, there's a lot of synergies between the data sets that you need here, right? So obviously I know all of you are very careful about your opt-in lists and making 
make sure that everything is compliant in how you're communicating with people. Um, and honestly, the things that you need for SMS are very similar to what you would need for email. So it's a lot of the same principles and a lot of the same um, data can be used in terms of your data sets. Um, but this also really allows you to get more robust in how you're engaging your customers. Um, definitely seeing an increase in open rates and engagement um, and, and your ability to just personalize more across those channels is really significant when you look at how you combine um, texting and email together. And then finally, increased engagement and satisfaction. Um, this satisfaction in particular across several studies, I think, is where uh, there was a lot of lifts in terms of people getting the outcome they wanted, whether that was a positive engagement with the brand, faster um, customer service and support, being able to get to the outcomes that they wanted more quickly, uh, being able to take a cross-channel approach really uh, helps you accelerate uh, that part of the customer's journey and get to a, a happy customer, um, a, a con hopefully converted and uh, and returning customer at the end of the day. So uh, I am now going to turn it over to Kate, who, you know, we just went over why you would want to combine messaging and email. Uh, so the next question is, how do you actually do that, right? When are the right times to bring in messaging? What are some of the principles uh, that you want to look at? So. Kate, I'm going to turn it over to you to share some of your uh, incredible use cases and best practices with us. Thank you, Julie. I, I hope I can inspire some of you. I'm not sure if I can, but um, the summary of those benefits were really spot on. And there are so many examples of and use cases of how adding SMS or text messaging to your communication strategy can really boost en engagement across the entire journey. Um, I think in the next slide, we, we list some of those out. And as background, um, Cinch Mess in, across the three brands, Cinch Message Media, Simple Texting, and ClickSend, we've got over 70,000 businesses using the platforms today to engage with their customers. So, um, you know, we've been around for a long time. It's, uh, it's, uh, we, we, we kind of know a thing or two. So, so um, a rule of thumb kind of when thinking about when to use SMS is when the communication is personal, timely, and relevant. So kind of starting in the, in the top left and working our way down, you know, click and collect is wedding, letting your customers know when the item they purchase is ready for pickup or delivery or confirming a booking, you know, with your customers or tracking the delivery of a package. I mean, we get these personally a lot. And I think we really, I know I do. I like it when I, when I get them. It's actually a communication from a business that I, that I seek out and enjoy getting. Um, communicating with employees, and these are often uh, specifically for managing shifts or scheduling confirmations or sending um, timely business updates. Of course, emergency alerts, uh, appointment reminders, ensuring everything runs on schedule and appointments aren't missed, um, which I think can be really you know, damaging or it can be harmful for a business when you have constantly folks are missing their appointments. We've come to sort of expect those now. Uh, marketing campaigns, reminders for billing and payments, um, conversational support. And that's also if in sales engagement, uh, a lot of companies use SMS to engage and move the sales process along and engage in, in live two-way uh, conversations. Um, personalized feedback and surveys. And then, and then finally, we all know and love the, the two-factor authentication you know, that, that we all do. So you know, and, and you think of all of these examples, all of these are examples where the communication is both timely and personalized. And so what I'll do now is, is talk specifically about three different customer use cases that bring some of this to life. And, and you know, we all kind of, I, I think we live and breathe the appointment reminders and billing reminders and booking confirmation. So we, we didn't include some of those because I think those are pretty clear, but these are this one is one uh, where the business was looking to create a, a sense, a little more sense of urgency across all the channels. And so this is a company called Mako Midwest. They're an auto painting and collision repair franchise in the Midwest. Uh, and Michelle, who is their business development manager, she follows up on all the incoming requests across multiple locations. And they have locations from 
Knoxville to Little Rock. And so she uh, found that generally took about seven to nine contacts. And this is a phone call or email follow up or, you know, that that to essentially close a deal or book an appointment. And she contacted about 100 people a day. And so what she did is she used the Cinch message media platform, which has different flexible options for managing different types of personalized and intelligent SMS and text messaging communications. So out of like a centralized inbox. So sometimes she would take a block of text to a number of leads uh, with the area of the shop location and a message and a reminder to set up their appointment. Other times she'd follow up very specifically with a short qualifying question and engage in a two-way conversation. So she used it kind of in, in multiple ways because it is a, a flexible plat platform. And it was like another pair of hands for her to keep the conversation going. She was much more efficient. Um, people that before would hang up the phone or would not respond to their emails. She even found sometimes they would apologize in the text message. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get back to you sooner kind of thing because it's a more personalized communication. And the interesting data point here too is that it not it it uh, resulted in engaged communication across all channels they had more phone calls more email open rates it was better engagement across all channels so the the key kind of takeaway here is it's not something that by any means replaces but used you know kind of strategically uh, it's it was a great way for them to drive and close more leads more efficient efficiently and create that sort of sense of urgency so that's that's Mako Midwest. Now this is Glamour Shop. Uh, Glamour Shop is a family-owned retail business in Brownwood, Texas. Been in the family for seventy years across four generations, and it's like the go-to spot for locals who are looking for chic styles and personalized attention. And the owner Stephanie, uh, she of course wears many hats, and she's you know, had the challenge of keeping important VIP customers engaged and informed. And she was already really active on social media and knew the value, which you all know too, of, of building community and loyalty among the base of your best customers is really important to get them coming back, to get them providing word of mouth. And she really was trying to figure out better ways to do that. So she used Cinch Message Media to send rich MMS messages. And Julie had referred to those. These had really gorgeous images of um, coveted items that were just back in stock. Or she also would have events in the store, like they really did have a margarita event where they were serving margaritas while you were shopping at happy hour. So when they were time, if you've got, um, this is an example, if you've got time sensitive uh, or events or, or promotions, that kind of messaging. This is a great example where um, uh, Stephanie from Glamour Shop used MMS and rich messaging to promote these time sensitive events uh, uh, to her VIP customers. The interesting sort of um, you know result or the ROI was that in the 70 years the business had been open, they had never taken a vacation. She had never been able to close the shop. And she actually took a vacation and she closed the shop for a week. And when she closed the shop, she notified everybody via an MMS message that they were going to be closed. So it's kind of a fun story where they literally were able to, to take a vacation for the first time because of this kind of better, you know, enhanced communication. So that is uh, that is Glamour Shop. Our, our third example. You know, um, we have all kinds of organizations, you know, hospitals, health, healthcare, businesses, small businesses, medium sized businesses. This is an educational institution. And they were really looking to connect better with a, a specific segment of the community, like on their terms. That's the the um, what what this one is about. So they're, they're an academy that was founded in 1793. So it's making it one of the oldest independent, independent schools in the US. So any school that literally predates the telegraph knows a little bit about adapting to new communication channels. So for this small, they had a small 12 person marketing team and they were challenged with communicating with this group of 9,000 people 
that included both students, their parents, uh, and then alumni and volunteers. So it was a really kind of mixed group of people. And what they did, which I think you all will appreciate, is they tracked very closely all the open rates in their emails, and they found there was a certain segment that was had very, very low open rates. I think it was likely the students, the younger, but it was those that aren't opening emails. So what they did is they supplemented with a certain segment, they su supplemented with um, SMS text messaging as the communication vehicle, <clears throat> excuse me. And in addition, they used it for, as like in the last example, for all the time, you know, time-based um, deadlines, school deadlines or events that are coming up or that kind of, that kind of thing. So they implement, you know, used uh, both. And it really, the, you know, the, the headline here is they were able to, to do more with less. They were just able to engage more and again, had better um, engagement across all the channels, um, but, but really were able to kind of segment out the, the um, specific um, base of users with their text messaging. So there's, there's a lot of different, you know, every business is different. If we go to the next slide, I thought what I do now is I, talk a little bit about kind of tips and tricks for getting started and best practices for thinking about how to integrate uh, SMS into your overall communication strategy. Uh, the, the first one is really, it sounds obvious, but define where it fits in. You, you saw here as an example, it may be that you're looking to drive more leads or drive more awareness, or you're trying to reach a specific segment of your base or your You've got time sensitive events that you really want to promote and, and get um, uh, more awareness around those. So there's a very much, you know, there's lots of different strategies and lots of different ways to start. So think through kind of what it is you're trying to achieve. Uh, and then second, um, uh, you know, leverage all the elements that are kind of, you know, basic things. Personalize. You can personalize uh, your message just like an email. Uh, you can, you know, personalize with their first name. And, you know, we also so integrate, we have contact sync with MailJet, of course, and we integrate with Salesforce and NetSuite and HubSpot and a lot of but the other communication uh, platforms as well. Um, second, ensure that the message is, is valuable, that it's something uh, important. Uh, third, and you all know this, uh, make sure that there's an opt-out. Uh, you've you've got to have an opt-out. Uh, fourth, be succinct. Um, I think we've all gotten those long text messages, and I know I, for one, often don't get past the fourth or fifth sentence in those. So really make sure it's succinct, get to the point that will grab their att attention. And then finally, um, include a call to action. And I know you all know this, but oftentimes people are looking at text messages in those in-between moments. So having a like you know, click and get your discount or sign up for the event or make a payment or anything like that. You can include that call to action in your text message to kind of get more engagement um, with your with your customers. And then finally, uh, ensure that the messages are compliant. Um, you you do need to have opt-ins and have, be okay to, to send um, via mobile, mobile phone. I'll talk about a little bit that in the next slide. Um, manage customer preferences and ensure that you've got an opt out for all marketing campaigns. And I know all of you are, are very much experts in that. So that's not lost on, on any of you. Uh, one last little, little set of kind of final reminders and I kind of couldn't help myself here. Um, on that, make it easy to opt in. So a, a lot of times we do get um, questions from customers. I, I don't have their mobile numbers. I don't, you know, I don't, can I, can I text them? I know when I'm signing up and I add my mobile number, if there's a little box there that says, send me a text, uh, text message for notify me, um, uh, enable, you know, important notifications, something like that. I almost always click it because I do want to know, oh yeah, my package is going to arrive tomorrow or that kind of thing. Right. So just make it think it, as you're collecting information, make it easy for people to, to say, okay, yes, I would like you to communicate with me via text. Second, um, be aware of time zones. Uh, sending an email in the middle of the night isn't isn't uh, isn't damaging, but sending a text message that wakes up an important customer in the middle of the night is not a great thing. So just be aware of the time zones. It's a different um, communication. And then you know some of the basics. Have a purpose. Um, 
It is a bit more of a personal uh, communication channel. So have a pers purpose, have that call to action, be relevant, you know, be relevant and timely. And then finally, you know, do prioritize quality over quantity. This isn't one where, you know, more is better. It's often kind of, you know, having something that's a bit more relevant and, and personal will really um, cut through here. So yeah, with, I think this is so helpful. Okay. I really oh, love how you guys you. You nodding, Julie. I like yeah, that. I yeah. Like I mean, just like so that, nice. that, um, you know, I, as, as many at email camp, I'm sure have heard this whole email is dead. Email is not dead. We, we know that oh, email no. still remains the most popular channel of communication. I think adding texting, whether that's SMS, MMS, like looking at how to add rich messaging, especially sort of keeping some of these things in mind that are on this slide of, you know, how can you make it very additive? Because mm -hmm. if you add it into your program, get it very, um, you know, you're doing certain things in email and you're doing other like very time sensitive or, you know, things that have a lot of urgency, you're doing that through text. Like you said, quality over quantity, making sure like, again, it's a little bit easier to ignore an email, right? Like if it's in your inbox, you can engage with it if you want or not. Text is is very in your face, right? When something pops up on your phone. And so making sure that you're really thinking about when you reach out to those customers um, and you're reaching out you know, to the customers either by looking at segmentation, looking at different opt-ins, how you're sort of encouraging people. Like, you know, I'm sure you all have seen a lot these days on it's like get the 10%, 15% discount for signing up for texts. Um, you know, just sort of thinking about how you can get people to engage and come in. And then once you do, just being very thoughtful about it. And, and then I think that leads to some of those great outcomes that we saw, like, you know, 400% lift and conversion right. when you can combine those two channels, right? It's not about one or the other. It's about email and messaging. Being That's special. right. Exactly. Like the first example I loved where it is not a either or by any means, it's there's every business is different. So thinking about the strategy that and what you're trying to achieve and in different time, maybe you're trying to drive leads at this time and trying to promote an event at this time. But I also loved that when we see this all the time, that it does increase engagement across all channels. And I think that's what all businesses are trying to do is better engage with customers and build that trust and build that conversation in a way that's easily and at a time that makes sense, that makes sense for them. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm looking at our Q and A queue, and uh, there is a lot of awesome questions in oh, here. Good. So I, don't I don't know how to look at the Q and A queue. So, yeah. Thomas, so Thomas, uh, walk us through it here. Yeah, yeah, real quick though, we got. I know we got some amazing Q and A, but really quick, Kate, I wanted to talk about message media for a moment, really quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. So, if you're if you're a Cinch Mailjet user and you're interested in adding SMS, I'd like you to check out message media. And uh, contact sync, which is in beta with Mailjet contacts, uh, but we have about 20% off uh, US message rate for the first three months on 12 month plan. So check that out. There should be a little hyperlink that's going to bottom at the bottom of our screen. So check that out, everyone. You get a moment. Kate, what did you think about all that stuff? That's some, some pretty cool things that are coming down the line for you guys. Oh yeah, it's great. No, it's it's really. Um, we're kind of just getting started too. That's what's really exciting. Yeah. It's, you know, I think that um, you know some of the other integrating socials and really. Like I said, you know, it's and it's not just either or it's how you engage. It's the whole mm -hmm. point is how you engage with your customers via email, via SMS, you know, WhatsApp, socials, all of that. So, yeah, no, it's it's uh, very excited about about all of it. It's and easy it's a to new get world. started too. That's the thing. It really is. <laughs> it is. It is. And that's the world we live in now. We get, I was getting uh, doctor text uh, somehow in space, by the way, but I was getting <laughs> doctor text earlier during email camp today. And I also get emails. It's, so it's, it's, we're in a multi-channel omni-channel world, y'all. So that's, that's how right. It is. But, that's right. Uh, real quick here. Let's do some Q and A really quick. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. Let's see the Q and A. This is going to be fun. It's all right. It's on the uh, right hand side here. But uh, there was one that I really wanted to cover. So someone was asking this one came in from external. Actually, I thought this was a really good question that we definitely need to talk about. Um, are privacy rules different for different communication channels like SMS or mobile messaging apps? Or is it all the same? It's a, it's a great question. Uh, and it depends on the country that you're in, too. Yep. But think of it as you do. Um, Let's see, you do need to get in the US 
opt-in permissions. So people do mm -hmm. need to opt in. I, I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, I know in Australia, you don't, it's, it's a little different. There's inferred opt-in. So there's, and depending on the, I think in, with GDPR in Europe, I think it's, it's um, different, but I think the way to think about it is overall, it's, it's similar to email where you do need permission. Um, you do need to get permission to communicate with people through their mobile device. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, uh, let's see. We actually, have a few. We have a little bit more time for another question. So let me go ahead and get that one down. Um, let's see here. I love this one. What do we need to keep in mind when it comes to an accessibility in SMS and MMS? And accessibility meaning uh, like like Apple versus Android, or accessibility meaning. What, what do you think that means? How do I know? Probably both. I would say with within uh, being agnostic, uh, you know, versus Apple versus Android, also being accessible for our 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 readers that you know need accessibility uh, yeah. to view you know SMS. Uh, probably in the in the realm of uh, of uh, voice readers, so our our yes. our viewers that you know that need to have that service for them and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, I, it's a great question and I'm not sure. I do think that there are, uh, there is the capability to do the kind of read me the message, you know, kind mm -hmm. of, so yep. for the, for yeah. the folks that, that, uh, can't see. Um, and I do I, believe I've seen a recent study. I'm, I'm now not, um, I'm, I'm not recalling which study was. So apologize guys, if we can find it, um, we'll certainly share. Um, but I think this is still a challenge with MMS, right? So, um, some of the things that we have an email about, um, you know, sort of like alternative tags and and how those things can be accessible. MMS is is not quite there yet. And that has a lot to do with the platform. Like, you know, we we're saying Android, Apple, like um, being able to make them accessible on those platforms. So I, I do think the the best practice that I've seen in terms of like, if you want, you know, the highest levels of accessibility possible right now, it is through SMS. But I think that there is a lot that is going on um, behind the scenes on sort of how we're addressing accessibility for MMS, how the um, the iOS and, and Android platforms are addressing accessibility. But I do think that um, if you're trying to keep really high standards, I know, again, that that is, that is something that's very important to especially our MailJet user base, where we've done a lot with accessibility. Um, and SMS is going to be your, your best bet as the first step. Um, and then also, you know, sort of see the feedback that you get from your users and, and um, you know, listen, listen to, to their needs and what you're seeing in, in your programs. And um, then I would, you know, keep an eye on how things are evolving in MMS. Yep, for sure. And if, and, and related to accessibility also tomorrow, we're going to have even more accessibility talks. So make sure you come back tomorrow as well, because we have a ton of those and they're awesome. I love them. I love them. I love them. All right. Moving on to another question. I love this question. This is a great one. Um, and we were, you were talking about this earlier. You talked about getting a text in the middle of the night. Okay. Uh, all Americans, we're going to get a text here pretty soon about our national uh, uh, system. Oh, I yeah, hope that's I don't get right. I saw that. Yeah, 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 I hope well, I'll be surprised if I get it in space here. But I love this question. <laughs> uh, Haley wanted to know, is there any data yet on best practice for SMS in relation to deployment time? Oh, is that interesting? Uh, in relation to deployment time, like when to send an SMS? Uh, it's kind of like for email, sending them on a certain time of day. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Mm, yes. Excellent question, and it really depends on what you're trying to achieve, right? So um, one of the examples that I gave were really time-based uh, events, you know? So there's the sort of send it, you know, the day before, four hours before, an hour before, you know, there's that kind of thing that's a completely different set of rules versus announcing, you know, we do them, we use them in our product for announcing product updates. So we just mm -hmm. try to send those sort of, during work hours, you know, the middle of the day, you know, morning, you know, in the, in the U.S. here, morning in the Pacific, you know, time zone and middle of the day in the Eastern time zone. So it really kind of depends, I think, um, certainly avoiding, you know, nighttime. I mean, kind of almost think logically for some of these things. But that's a great thing. Just like email, you can you can schedule it to go whenever, depending on the time zones, all of that stuff is sort of built into the, to the platform, you know, so. Well, um, email, Kate, you can also, you can test that, right? I mean, you can sort of look at 
results that you're getting. Um, you know, so I think that's the great thing about, you know, using a more robust, robust platform when you're doing SMS is being able to get the feedback loop right on how people, um, you know, if, if they're, if you're getting feedback, if you're getting text responses, like you can, you can see a lot of that engagement. That's right. That's right. Like one kind of, you know, I don't know if it's a niche example, but it's a great example is we have an integration with Shopify and sometimes people will shop and they'll leave something in their shopping cart and then we can send a text message and you do that an hour after, a day after, two days after, hey, you left this in your shopping cart, do you want to finish? You know, so there's kind of testing, the the testing is is against different use cases, you know, than sort of like against, you know, open rates that might be about abandoned chart recovery or appointment reminders, how soon before the appointment and that kind of thing. So um, cool. I hope that answered the question. It's just oh, yeah, a little bit sure. more nuanced and a lot more uh, different use cases there. Oh, and for sure. And, and, and like you said earlier, it really depends where, well, where is the moon that time of night? Okay. Is it, is it late in the evening? Yeah. Let's not send a text around the middle of the evening for, for, <laughs> for, uh, any, for any marketing that, whatsoever. That's, that is kind of rule number one. Yes. Yeah. Where, where is the moon? Is the sun up? Okay. It might be a little bit better right now, but... <laughs> But cool. Well, y'all, do you have any last last remarks, anything before we get going here? I did want to do a little plug really quick. If y'all want to hear more from us, please click that green button that's above us if you want to sign up for and hear more information from all these channels that we're talking about. Lots of good takeaways and stuff like that. So please, please, if you want to hear more from us, make sure you click that. But Julie, Kate, any last words, anything else you'd like to leave before we before you head home to Earth? No, just just thank you. I mean, it's really great, you know, to kind of think about how email plus SMS is like peanut butter and chocolate, you know, it's just yeah. is better, better together. Right. So, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. And lots of exciting stuff coming. I think it's been really cool being able on, on the email side of the business some more that we've been working with some of our messaging colleagues and all the cool use cases and things you can start to put together. So, you know, I think is right now, everybody's in the middle of like 2024 planning, right? I know that we're doing that here and you're sort of thinking about like, you're going to get through the holidays and this busy season and, and what do you do next year to make things bigger and better and deliver greater results, right? I'm sure you're all going to crush it in the holiday season uh, if this is a, a, a heavy season for you. And then uh, how are you going to top that next year? And so really thinking about, you know, adding another channel to your strategy and how that can work together. Um, I think that's a that's a really interesting thing to look at as you're, um, as you're starting to plan next year for what your strategy is going to be. And these are very complementary uh, channels that are easy to use together. So um, I hope that that next year we get some awesome stories from y'all on how you've been combining <laughs> messaging and email. Great. Love it. Well, you too. Thank you so much for being here and we'll see you soon. All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks everyone. Thank you. All right. I'll meet you all at the uh, next session, last session. Here we go. All right.